Welcome to Love Bites, a show where we debug romance. Now, I am not a doctor. I am not a psychiatrist. I am not a patient. I don't have a degree in sociology or psychology, but what I do have is wealth of experience and a sincere desire to help you. Because sometimes love can get messy. Sometimes, if you're not careful, love bites. <coughs> oh man, welcome to Love Bites with our guest Cody. Cody, how are you doing, man? I'm doing swell. How are you doing, boss? I am good. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I've been wanting to do a Love Bites with you for a while, but the schedule's been crazy, and I'm glad that we can actually do this now. I think you are going to be perfect for this. Uh, so before we start, let's talk about qualifications. Cody, what are your qualifications to do this? Well, I'm not qualified to talk about romance. Let me tell you why I'm qualified to talk about romance. There we been go. In a, been in a serious relationship for about five years. Before that, I was just a man on the prowl, true beast. Uh, I drink my whiskey straight. I drive fast cars. Um, I oftentimes don't look both ways before crossing the road. I've, I've done it all, Neil. I've done it wow. all. Wow. You sound like the exact person that we need for this, this show. This is perfect. I came to deliver. Wow. All right. Well, with that, let's jump into our first question. And it's kind of a long one. So brace yourself here. Okay. All right. Hello, Neil and guest. Don't mention my name. So I've got a semi-long story before the question. There's this girl I used to be real good friends with since before high school, 21 now, and there were never any feelings involved in our relationship. We could hang out and joke about with uh, joke around without any feelings towards having a romantic relationship, which was fine for the both of us. We're in the same circle of friends. We have same similar interests and hung out a lot together as friends, just the two of us. Now, at the start of high school, she started to date this guy who no one in our circle of friends approved of, and for good reason. He was an ass. Not even the funny kind. I mean, he was the kind of guy you could just not believe the behavior of. He was rude, and no matter how hard you tried to befriend the guy for her sake, he was still rude. And there was a point where we just gave up. We didn't really care about this guy at all as long as he was nice to his girlfriend, which he was for the better part of their relationship. But during their relationship, mainly towards the end, where the guy started being an ass to her as well, I started to get feelings for this girl. I never told anyone, not even till this day. A lot of convincing from her circle of friends of how big of a jerk this guy was, she saw reason and broke up with the guy, only to fall into another relationship with an even worse sack of shit. The behaviors of this guy was way better at first, but after a while he showed his true colors, he ended up manipulating her to the point where she had to break her plans off with her friends to be with him because he said so, in quotes. Then, after a lot of convincing from the same circle of friends, a year passed and the relationship got worse, but we broke them up as well. I'm seeing a disturbing trend here. Keep in mind, we're not in the business of breaking up relationships just for fun, but neither of these guys were healthy for the girl, and we just did what we thought was best. Throughout these two relationships, my affection for this girl grew a lot, and we usually and I was usually the one who tried to hear her side of the story, as well as explain my own point of view when no one else did. We talked about a lot a lot about her feelings and toward and thoughts towards her relationships, as well as mine, and I was probably the one who was the most invested in this girl. Come college, we kind of fell apart, mostly because our circle of friends got girlfriends and boyfriends of their own and moved away from college, and some just disappeared. In quotes, so I don't know if that means he killed them or if they yeah, just stopped just talking. Yeah, they're just gone. They just disappeared. He axed them. Yeah. We have tried to keep in touch, but don't really hang out or talk anymore, except at the occasional party or through common friends or acquaintances. I never told anyone about my feelings in fear of our splitting up our circle of friends. And now that they're split up, I don't really have a lot of friends to talk about this kind of stuff, so I turn to you. So, here's my question. I still have feelings for this girl, though I don't know what kind. Did I fall for the damsel in distress, or did I fall for the real girl through the more intimate conversations we had throughout her relationships? What should I do... Thanks. Well, that's a that's a doozy, man. That's a doozy. Uh, so it's really difficult. I mean, it's difficult to assess, even even with as long winded as that was. There's uh, this is obviously way more nuanced than you can squeeze into a, a couple of paragraphs. Oh yeah. Um, off the bat, not super keen on you guys sort of having like uh, you know, like uh. Uh, a council chamber designed to figure out whether or not she was getting what she could have out of her relationships. That's just never going to work well. Especially, it's, it's a conflict of interest if you like this girl. 
Um, so, so keep that in mind. But that's in the past. Um, when it comes to telling her about you know your feelings, it's if you're in college, man. The, the thing that I found as I, I get older, these things tend to be less of a big deal than you think they are. Um, so, if you've had a crush on this girl for eight years, uh, I figure you could just tell her. Uh, I think the only real repercussion that you could find is she might get pissed if you tell her you've had a crush on her for eight years and you broke up two of her relationships in the past. But I don't know to what extent you sort of chimed in. But um, chances are she probably knew, man. I it, you got a crush on a girl for eight years. I there there had to have been a couple little flags that that popped up. So. Yeah, I would say a similar thing. Whether or not you fell for the damsel of stress or the real girl, which there's no way to really tell, you should you should say something, and she probably has some idea. And you're not gonna you're always gonna regret it if you don't try it, and you'll you almost never regret it if you do. So, what the hell, yeah. man? Just what what are you gonna lose, right? Exactly. If that's a, that's a super powerful phrase that a person taught me. Uh, don't think about it like what's the worst that can happen because you, you actually might embarrass yourself. That could happen, but think about what do I have to lose. Yeah. Um, you're, you're not going to walk away with anything less than you have right now. And I don't know, you don't want to be 37 and just wondering what you should have done and stuff. So just, just do it, man. You owe it to yourself. Um, be honest, though. Always be honest. Um... Say you've had a crush on her for a while. Because I think that's important. You know, maybe she's always liked you too, but you don't want to start off uh, with false pretenses. Um, yeah, so that's my two cents. I don't know. I Maybe you do have a damsel, damsel in distress type, but uh, again, even with your, your eloquent three or four paragraphs, that's impossible for us to, to know. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about it. Go for it. You're going to enjoy your life a lot more if you do things than if you don't do things, just generally speaking. So, uh, let's just hop on to the next one, because I feel like that was pretty easy. Second question. Dear Koi Boon Guest, do you have any advice on proposing? Like, when is the right time to propose, and any methods you'd recommend? How did it go for you? Well, Cody, you, you just got married last year? Yeah, but you just recently proposed, so I think we, uh, we should start uh, with you, big man. Uh, how do you know when the right time to propose is? That's a, that's a question I asked myself a lot. My, my proposal process was about nine months long from the deciding to do it to the actual going through with it. It was a period of a long time. For me, the decision was, it, it kind of came down to, okay, been together for like five years, four and a half years. Actually, at that point, it had only been four because it was, yeah, whatever. We've been together for four years. I really, really, really like this person. I want to spend the rest of my life with this person. And I hope they say yes. And then that, the whole, like, well, are they going to say yes? Are they not going to say yes? Oh, my God, maybe I should wait. Maybe, like, another six months will make it better. That shit, you know, haunted me for a while and kind of fucked my head. And then I came to this crystallizing moment where it's like, oh, you know, after four years together, if she doesn't, can't commit to, like, a serious relationship, like, if she can't commit at, after four years, she's probably not going to be able to commit after five and maybe not after six. Maybe six will do it, but... Who knows? Maybe not. Like four years is a good amount of time to have made up your mind about someone, and so that was my like, all right, let's do that. If if she can't, if she's not ready after four years, then she's never going to be ready, and I should you know stop wasting my time and go find someone who will be ready. Because you're you're kind of putting yourself in a pickle. Like if you if four years is enough, but seven is, do you really want to like after seven years she may decide that you know what this isn't the relationship I want. She could go either way at that point. So. You kind of have to figure out how much time you're willing to invest in a relationship before before having to make the decision to to get married or to bail. And for me, that, that mark was kind of like around the four years of, well, I'm not going to get to know her any better. To Like, my mind will not change on this matter. I know her pretty well. Her mind shouldn't really change on me. She should know me by now and know whether or not she wants to marry me by now. So let's let's do that. And that's how I decided when... Like, when was the right time for me? It was after I, I kind of came to that conclusion. How about, how about you, Cody? Yeah, we were doing, I think we were at about three and a half years. Uh, and I knew I wanted to do it. Uh, and there was a, a trip that we were going on. So I sort of put myself on the clock. And like you said, I, at this point in time, the, you know, my, my now wife was already my best friend. 
uh, there wasn't any, you know, page left unturned. There wasn't like any secret that she didn't know for both of us. Uh, so I felt like exact, uh, exactly like you said, it was an extra couple months wasn't going to make a difference. I wasn't going to win her over anymore in a couple of months. And, you know, there wasn't any more left to really figure out or explore before we moved on to this point. You know, the next phase of our relationship. Uh, I got, you know, a little bit of the, the heebie-jeebies as I got closer to knowing, like, I okay, I'm starting to think about when exactly I want to do this and stuff. Because you are closing a chapter of your life, right? Like, the relationship... It's interesting because on the day to day, when you move from boyfriend and girlfriend to fiance, uh, it doesn't really change on the day to day. But there's like just a profound this the intensity is different. So, you know, all the the romanticized ideas you have about you know being a a young stud and stuff, you sort of just have to do your best to start curtailing those and realize those that those days are over forever. Um, uh, so. Yeah, for me, it was an easy choice. Uh, I knew that th this person brought so much to my life, and um, uh, you know, I uh, as weird as that was, there was it was impossible for me to imagine anyone ever stepping up to the plate and being half as cool as this person was. So I was just like, that's that's when I knew. I was just like, it'll never get better. So, you know, this is the best. So, how did you actually go about doing it? We were in, uh, I, so I grew up just outside of Joshua Tree National Park, and we went rock climbing. Nice. And I, uh, it, we had gone rock climbing the first time we visited my hometown, so I, it was like one of our first date dates. Uh, well, it was like the, one of the first big indicators that it, we were starting to be a serious couple. So I gave it a little throwback, you know what I mean, to the, mm -hmm. to the, to the early days and uh, proposed on a big rock in the desert. Okay, nice. How about you? I think I saw pictures. Yeah, I did it on yeah. Treasure Island at sundown, like watching the city, uh, watching the sun go down over the city, and then kind of waited until there was no one else nearby and just kind of dropped on one knee and did the blah, blah, blah. But, uh, nice. Huh. Nice. Cool. So, yeah, anyway, man, I feel like you'll know in your heart of, heart of hearts if, you, uh, if you're ready for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You'll you'll do fine. Don't worry about it. Don't be scared. I know it's terrifying. I spent the f the whole day leading up to my uh, engagement just freaking out around the house, like pacing back and forth, sitting down like I should qu chill out and watch TV, and then oh my god, this is my last day as a single guy. Why am I watching TV? Like I should be doing something more important. And yeah, I was fucking flipping out that last day. Uh, I felt like I was pretty. I, I I felt like I I knew she was gonna say yes, but uh, like I said, the the heebie-jeebies were, you know, this is you're not a young college man anymore. You know, um, you got to step up to the plate, start being sort of a man. You got to, and we got to start talking about sharing bank accounts and stuff, weird weird things like that. Uh, that's that's sort of what scared me more so than the idea of rejection. It's just like finally, it is a, it is a a, a step up the ladder in in the in oh, life. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right, I think that is knocked away. Let's move on to our next one. Hey, Neil and guest, what is your take on managing different timelines while simultaneously managing a long-distance relationship? I'm currently in grad school and find myself occupied academically, whereas the girl I am currently dating is still an undergrad and has a bit more free time on her hands. We're both focused students and have openly expressed our feelings for each other, but I'm in a position that I'm afraid of commitment and taking this relationship further, knowing that I have a lot of things on my plate and I'm going away from home for approximately the next two to three years. What are some steps that I should take? Um, she's in grad school and really busy. She's in undergrad, has more free time, and he's leaving in the next... He's leaving for two and three years? Hmm. Whatever, dude. Go for it. You know, like, not every relationship that you get into has to be the... a hunt for, like, the one that you'll be with forever. You can casually date someone and see where it goes or you can just enjoy the time that you spend with that person and then you break up and you move away like you don't not every relationship has to end in heartbreak you can you can spend time with someone romantically knowing that there's going to be a limit on it like that's there's nothing wrong with that yeah no i i agree as long as expectations are clear uh i i think a, a big misconception 
like Neil pointed out, was that when you start dating someone that this is supposed to be, um, you, you start heading down the, the path towards marriage or, or being with one another forever. And you're a busy guy. Uh, uh, she's in the middle of, of college. You guys are going to have to spend some time apart. Just uh, make sure that you guys manage your expectations and are honest with one another. And then, you know, maybe when you're away, it'll actually be really nice to have a friend. So you, it would be to your benefit to actually sort of prolong this instead of being worried about hurting her feelings because you're not as available as you'd like. You know, maybe there's still a lot of value that you can find from this. Um, um, I think it's just important for you to figure out how you feel about it and then just tell her and then likewise listen. Uh, maybe she, you know, maybe she is looking for something really serious and if she can't get your, you know, as much time as she'd like, it, it won't work out for her, but at least you guys were honest and talked about it uh, as opposed to, I don't know, calling it off based on a, a guess or a hunch that maybe it's you know, the other person wants this. That's just kind of silly. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, I really like what you said at the beginning of that about managing expectations. Like that, that's key. If you go into this and be like, I really like you. I know I'm a grad student. You're an undergrad. I hope you're not her teacher or like TA. Let's hope that's not the situation. And if it is, well, write me a story when it's all over. I'd like to hear how it turned out. Um, but like, just let her know up front, hey, I, I, I would like you, I want to hang out with you, be with you, but I am going to be leaving in whatever period of time, four yeah. years, this can't last, but let's have fun, you know, let's be together while it can be, while we can be, something like that would be, I think that that's a, a nice way of handling the situation. Because you have a responsibility to the person that you are romantically involved with, and that responsibility is being honest with them about what they should expect out of the relationship and what you are willing to put in and what you expect out of it. So as long as you are doing the right thing by her, by letting her know you have a, a timeline that may not include her, you're fine. Don't, don't sweat it. Go for it. Uh, question three. Hey, Neil and guest, I'll keep this short. Thank you. How do you know if a girl's interested in you? And if you're interested in her and su suspect she's interested in you, what do you do if you want to start a relationship? Specifically, if you have very little relationship experience. <laughs> I remember junior high and high school, man. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I feel, I feel bad because it does, it does sound based on, you know, sort of the, the clues we were given, like this might be a younger fellow. Yeah. Um, and dating in junior high and high school is, is a lot... Uh, it's a lot harder to sort of be just casual, you know, like when you're in college, you can just ask a person out and then over the, you know, hour and a half you spend eating dinner with one another, you can sort of figure out whether this person's shitty or not or vice versa, whether, she, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Uh, so presuming, presuming you're old enough to actually like, you know, sort of go out and, and spend maybe an hour at a restaurant or a movie with this person. That's what I would, you know, if you, if you're talking to this person regularly enough where you think you might be romantically interested in them, I would just say, Hey, would you like to go grab dinner or something? And they'll either say yes or no. Um, if the no is, uh, has a, a an excuse slapped on with it, you, you'll, you should be able to defer or discern rather whether she's being genuine and, and just can't do it that day and she'll likely hit hit you back up or she'll say yes and then you know you have a date and boom there you go if you're younger it's a little tougher um there's all this sort of stigma attached with you know I, man it's been so long what do you do do you still do you still ask girls out when you're young like you just ask them out do you, will you go out with me is that still a thing i don't know man I, first off, there's no way to ever determine if someone is genuinely interested in you. There's no test that you can formulate that they will pass without having to actually talk to them. There is no, like, I read this book, and now I can read all women's body language and determine when they're interested in me. Like, if you can figure that out, you and I will make a killing when we write our book about how to how to solve this stuff. But you're, you're going to have to, as Cody said, you're going to have to to say something to her. Like, ask her to go out with you. If she says no... There's your answer. Or as he said, you know, how did I, um, what, what I actually mean to say is if she says no, and then you can try and reschedule like, oh, you, you're busy tonight, regardless of the excuse, you're busy tonight. What about tomorrow? And she's like, nope, busy then. And then you try a third time. You're like, well, what about this other day? And she like shuts you down without trying to, if you're trying to reschedule and she doesn't try and reschedule, that's your like 
basic litmus test, but that does involve asking her and talking to her. So if you're if you're putting work into it and she seems interested in trying to put work into it too, you're probably in a good position. If you're putting work into it and she's kind of just blowing it off or you know says I'll let you know, you're you're kind of just screwed. In my in my experience, which is not that extensive, I'm sure the whiskey drinking man of Cody would have more experience though. Yeah, um, a, a lot of it comes down to just confidence too I, with this sort of stuff um which it, and it sounds like you're sort of new to the whole dating thing so that can't be expected you know right off the bat but uh i figure after a couple of attempts you'll sort of you'll have the ropes down well enough to know whether it's worth taking a a shot at or not and like i said it it depends a lot on context um when you're in, in college it's like it, Asking a person out is not a it's not a big deal. Um, when you're younger, I remember like you know you would like you had to ask a person out, and that and you know that meant that there was some sort of um, teenage monogamy imposed. Um, so it's it's contextual as well, but you know you just gotta just ask. Sometimes just asking's fine. And then, and the thing is that I've always found when you ask someone a difficult question, you always feel like a badass afterwards anyway. So just do it. Just do it. Um, you know, uh, if you're, if you're sort of new to the romance game, which I think we can decisively conclude yes. from the question, you know, just, just, even though the age is sort of nebulous, we can figure out you're, you're, you're new, you're new to the, to the dating scene. You're going to get your, your feelings hurt anyway. And, you know, someone saying, no, they don't want to go, go out with you is actually going to be so far down on the spectrum of ways that, you know, someone will hurt your feeling feelings like in, when it comes to romance that you sh you should learn to shrug this off pretty early and just dive right in that's a really interesting way of looking at it I've, I've never looked at it that way it is way easier to get rejected when asking someone out than it is to ask them out and have them crush your heart later on yes oh exactly. my god that is so much easier that really puts a lot of things in perspective jesus i'm so glad we have you on here you're you're brilliant i do what i can yeah dude just go for it because if she says yes, you're going to get hurt more later on when you break up than if she says no. I absolutely go for it. Now there's never... Wow. I, I'm very actually struck by that. Let's, let's move on to question something or other. Hello, Neil and guest. I should probably start by saying that I get very, very easily frustrated and pretty dense about pretty much anything and 16 and three quarters years old. Maybe those things are related. Epic. <laughs> so I'm in love with a pretty close friend of mine. She'll turn 18 in about three months. I don't know if that's important or not. Well, you're turning 17 in about three months, so it's fine. But I'm not sure whether or not she likes me. I'm not really sure because she doesn't appear to act differently around me, or maybe I just don't really notice. I, on the other hand, find myself always acting maybe a bit too nice and friendly around her. I recently talked to her about me not being too happy about our friendship because I felt like I was putting a lot of energy into her, but didn't feel like she gave back all that much. She responded that saying she also noticed that and felt like she, er, and that she always felt bad when she does that. For example, I asked her, she wanted to do a little shopping with me and she refuses, which I do when she asks me to. Example, I asked her if she wants to do a little shopping with me and she refuses, which I do when she asks me to. I don't. Okay. So, so when he asks her, "Hey, do you want to go shopping?" She sometimes will give him the the big no. Uh -huh. and then he always accepts when she asks if he wants to go shopping. Oh, I see. Got it. Got it. I makes sense now. She also said that she pretty much does it like that with all her friends because she always feels like that any time could be spent more efficiently, and her friends aren't that social either. Normally, I'd just go for it and ask her out, but she's one of the few friends that I have left. Most of them just kind of stopped caring about me, don't have time, or both. I pretty much have every class with her, and we also sit next to each other in a lot of them. But I also can't take seeing some guys flirting with her all the time anymore. She doesn't seem to respond to those attempts in any way. It might seem like she's kind of a bitch the way I'm describing this, but that's not the case at all. She's really, really sweet and thoughtful. I don't think I can handle losing yet another dear friend, and excommunicating, as you called it in the episode with Jeff, isn't really an option because I see her in school so often. 
but I don't think I can handle continuing to be friends like this in a, this a lot longer. Well, maybe I'm also overthinking this part, and it wouldn't be that hard in reality. I don't know. In any case, thanks for answering or reading my question, and sorry for the length and the excessive use of but. I am 16-year-old fan from Germany. Well, Herman the German, go for it, dude. Because if you... So if you can't not be friends with her, like if you can't not see her, if she's going to be in all your classes anyway, you're going to have to deal with this person. So it would be, And she's one of your few friends, so you can't be like, whoa, I can't handle not being able to date you. I'm going to like cut you out of my life and get past this. You have to deal with this in like a very head-to-head -head way. So you just, have to, you just have to ask her. Otherwise, you're going to be killed for the rest of high school, I think. Yeah, uh, it just sounds agonizing if you have to go through this every day, you know, when you got a crush on this girl. Um, just ask. Um, I think, you know, if your friendship is really strong, um, I've had, you know, when I was young stud and racing motorcycles in Italy, I, I had, you know, girls that were friends that I liked and they didn't like me and, th and I had the inverse happen as well. And any true good friend will just get over it. it it's just fine. Um, I, I, there's always sort of a little lens that complicates things when you're, when you're a smidge younger, but you know, you're 16 and three quarters, man, you're almost there. You're almost, you know, you're in the final stretch. So you should just put on your adult shoes now and just, just do it. Just ask, you know, uh, cause it, again, you know, you have nothing to lose. Um, because uh, I I really think you know uh, if if this is if this is an issue enough an issue big enough to break up a friendship it probably wasn't that great of a friendship. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've been friends for a while. She's one of your few friends left. You see her in all of your classes. You hang out all the time. And maybe she's a little aloof and doesn't really respond to things. But she might start responding to things if you were expressed a little bit more confidence. I think you stated at the very beginning that you are shy and something. He gets frustrated easily. Yeah. You need to not get frustrated. That's a big thing, though. So that would be the one, that would be the postscript is like, if things don't go the way you want, do not get frustrated. So you've already self-identified this as a problem of yours, which is awesome because that means you're, you're, already, you're already ready to react to that maybe being an issue here. Mm-hmm. That could be something that would would make it, you know. So if she's just like, "No, nah, I'm sorry, I don't really like you," and then you get really frustrated and become difficult to deal with about it, that could be an annoyance and, and hurt the friendship. Whereas I think, like, "Hey, girl, do you like me?" and she's like, "No, I don't," and you're just like, "Okay, GG, we're still friends. It's fine." Yeah. Um, yeah. I, so he's. Hmm, mm -hmm. Normally, just go for it and ask her out, but she's one of the few friends that I have left. I have pretty much every class with her, and we sit next to each other in a lot of them. So, yeah, you're definitely head over heels for this girl, because you can't stand her seeing seeing other guys flirt with her. She's in all of your classes. You sit next to her in most of, the, most of them. Just, you gotta say something. And it helps if you pretend you have massive balls when you do it. Um, and just be, yeah. be confident, ask her out in some regard. Like, you know, maybe... Instead of saying, do you want to go shopping with me, ask her to some activity that you wouldn't normally ask her to and, you know, try and get that date or somehow let it know that it, let her know in the asking that it is a date rather than saying, hey, let's go shopping. Like, hey, why don't the two of us go out for ice cream or something like that, where it's a little bit more intimate and a little bit more, your wording kind of comes across as the two of us are doing this activity, not let's do this with people, but, you know, very specific and then when you're out of ice cream or whatever it is you're doing, be honest and be like, I really like you. I think you and I are great together. Let's give it a shot. Or you can, you know, whatever, however it is that you kids ask girls out these days. Yeah. I don't know. I'm old. Over the hill. Uh, do you have any other last words on this one, Cody? No, I think, I, I think this one's pretty well dissected. Yeah, I think it's good. All right, next question. Uh, actually, we're skipping this question because it is like 10 paragraphs long. I will actually read this and distill it into something else for next time. This is okay. too long. 
Um, okay, here we go. All right, this is going to be kind of a long one. <laughs> no, it's nice and short, so apologies in advance. Dear Neil and guest, I am an 18-year-old hetero guy. About four years ago, I was dating a girl. Let's call her Girl A. Girl's a is, girl A's parents did not approve of her dating, and our relationship died slowly, or slowly died out because we couldn't see each other. We didn't go to the same school, and neither of us could drive at the time. It was roughly on me, but a couple months later, I started dating Girl B. I could have been with girl B for th uh, I have been with girl B for 3 years now and we got about engaged about 6 months ago. There should not be a girl A in this story if you're engaged for 3 months. We met through marching band and this year when I went off to college, the school we went to killed the marching band program. So girl B went to a different band. Thing is, the band she is in now is girl A is in also. Girl A and I have recently talked a lot and smoothed things out and are actually really good friends now. Here is where the problem is. Girl A recently started dating another guy. She dated while we were not talking, but broke up before we became friends again. I should be really happy for her because she has liked this guy for a while now, but for some reason I get this really uneasy feeling when I see them together. I'm not sure what I'm feeling. Is it jealousy or whatever? So my question is, any advice on how to deal with these strange new feelings? I'm very sure of my love for Girl B, but I occasionally find myself still asking, what would things be like if I was with girl A? If I really do care for girl A, then how in the hell am I going to break up to break it up to girl B, my fiance? Should I just wait it out and see if the feelings persist? Thank you all for your help. Sincerely, Anonymous. And holy shit. Yeah, this is a heavy one. This is a heavy one. It sounds like they're young, though. It sounds like they're pretty young. Young for an engagement. Yeah, because um, they're in college, right? I'm 18 I years old. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is, you know, this happens. Um, depending on where you live, younger engagements uh, seem to happen more than they do other places. So I'm not going to uh, pass judgment there. Um, you know, I remember it's changed a lot, and it changes a lot when you get older. I remember when I was younger, like at 18, which was before I met my wife, um, I used to be, even while dating, you know, while I was single and I would date, you know, I would, whatever would happen with a relationship, I would move on and be in another relationship. And I would still have these weird lingering feelings. Uh, guys oftentimes tend to be ter territorial when it's not appropriate. I think that might be happening because you still are, you know, a pretty young man. Even though you might have your wits about you and you re really might love girl B. Um, uh... You know, if it's like sort of a fleeting feeling, like you're out and you see girl A with this guy and you're just like, oh man, you know, what happened, what would have happened if we kept dating? I think that's sort of a natural thing. I think, however, if it ends up being something that consumes your thoughts to the point where you're worried about it being problematic, it actually is probably problematic. Um, you writing into a, a, a love show on Twitch about it actually might be an indicator that it is sort of hanging out in your mind maybe a little more than it should uh in which case i recommend seriously seriously spending a day or two to concisely figure out how you feel about the situation and i'm always a huge advocate for honesty i think honesty is the most important thing in any relationship and you know if you're losing sleep over this you got to bring it up to to girl b just to just to be fair um you know uh i don't know uh, yeah. I, I, I'll always, I'll always fall back on on honesty as the best policy. So that's sort of how I feel. This is, I don't even know, man. You're engaged to girl B, who is in a class with girl A, and now you're starting to have feelings for girl A again. I mean, if you're an engaged man, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be falling for other girls, especially girls that you split up with. I I don't know if I can take Cody's stance of not passing judgment on getting engaged too early, but if you're engaged and you're if you're engaged at 18 and you're still thinking about your ex and like, well, maybe I should get together with my ex, you might have made a mistake and jumped on board something a little bit too soon before you were ready. Like, I, I don't know how long you've been engaged. Wait, you said three months now, right? I've been I have been with girl B for three years now, and we got engaged about six months ago. Well, so that's not a bad period of time. Yeah. So that, but that's kind of interesting, man. That meant he wasn't with 
girl that this is another thing to keep in mind if you're 18 mhm been with girl B for three years. That means you haven't been with girl A for at least three years. These are huge formative years that you haven't spent with girl A at all. You have no idea whether you're compatible at all. I think there is uh, a portion of this that you sort of have romanticized, which I think is is actually perfectly normal and happens a lot, especially when you're a little bit younger. Um, you know? Uh... But yeah, three years for, I mean, like, think about this. Three years is one-sixth of your life. You, you haven't been with this girl for one-sixth of your life. Well, you've been with, uh, uh, it's just, it's, it's getting a little murky. I think, I don't know. We also, we also haven't addressed the parent thing. The parents slowly broke up the, the first relationship. Uh-huh. He also didn't include why that happened, really, why the, he said it was on him mostly at one point in time. Yeah. Uh, but not including that is, you know, I, it's impossible to sort of address and give, give advice. Um, I mean, like we, like we talked about earlier in the show, getting engaged is a huge, huge commitment. You're drawing a line in the sand when you get engaged to someone. Um, so I think your obligation right now is to do right by girl B. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you can't figure out on your own in a couple of days whether or not you, if you can't like convince yourself that you're not interested in girl A in a couple of days, you should tell your fiance, hey, that you know that person in your band, well, we have this history and now I'm getting this like mix of feelings and I still love you to death, but there's weird shit coming up and I'm not sure about it. I need your help. Like you, you need to tell her regardless of what you end up doing. And I think that you should talk about it with your fiance and see how she feels about it, see how you feel about it, and decide what to do. But if you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be having this strong of feelings for another person while you're engaged so quickly. Like th this is a pretty telling sign that you might be on the wrong ship or not ready to be sailing yet. So I hope this helps in some regard. Do you got any last words on this? No, I think I think that's about it. I, you know, just remember, you know, when you make commitments to people, um, you just got to follow through on them. Uh, and, and doubling back, honesty is always the the best policy, uh, especially when these people uh, are investing a lot of themselves into you. You got to do bar do right by them. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next one. Hello, Neil and guest. Note, I've got dyslexia, and I'm a former. A foreigner, a.k.a. not from the U.S., slash English is not my main language, so walk with caution. Okay. I am a 20-year-old guy from the southeastern part of Norway. I have not kissed a girl, and that's fine, but I do, however, have this big crush on a girl that I met in my first year of high school. She was really the first girl I have talked to as a human being and not, as, not getting a mind block and entering a full retard mode. Uh... We didn't talk much in the lo those three years, but when we did, my heart was beating so fast and it was a miracle that I was able to keep up the conversation. After high school, we didn't really have much of contact until four months into my first year at university. I made contact with her on a whim on Facebook after reading a cool happy birthday note from her on my Facebook wall. It was a funny comment and not a generic happy birthday, and it intrigued me. After that, we've had many conversations and talked on Facebook, sometimes a week, or several times a week. Things were going great until my self-confidence got smacked right in the nuts. Because you see, the reason why I didn't talk to the girl as a human being was because I was scared of them. The reason for that is I'm the ugliest thing to walk on this planet. You guessed it, a ginger. After the Gingers Do Not Have Souls video, I got tired of hearing people around me making soul jokes, laughing at me, pointing at me, just to whisper to the person next to me about my hair color. Yeah, it's not fun. But I got over it in high school. The moment I started talking to her, the girl, she was... Oh, but I got over it in high school the moment I started talking to her. She was also the first person I talked to on that first day of high school. She helped me getting over my hair color just by talking casually about it and ignoring my defect, as people would like to call it. Man, they are rough in Europe about people with red uh, yeah, hair. I think they are. That shit's brutal. After that, I could more or less talk to anyone, male and female alike, and I became, uh, I became more of a person and not a frightened animal. So what initiated my self-esteem to, to crumble? A guy on the internet calling gingers ugly, which I'm used to, but this was a person I really like listening to, so it hurt when he said it and 
previous thoughts from before when I was more or less depressed came back and I have started to avert my own gaze in the mirror and yet getting yet again afraid of people looking at me casually. I hate it. So my question, uh, so what is my question you might ask? With the grand return of my remembrance of my ugliness, should I abandon any feelings I have with this girl? Again, I have a huge crush on her and I might say, I might dare say I have fallen for her. Anyway, she's a 10 out of 10 and I'm a minus 14 out of 10 with my hair being red. I'm more, without my hair being red, I'm more or less a 7 out of 10, I think. So yeah, way out of my league. I am ugly and yeah, girls don't like ugly dudes, especially when you're a mutant just because your hair color. Fuck society, man. <laughs> what a strong ending. Uh, that's how I'm going to end all of my professional emails from now on. Um, um, wait, why the huge wall of text? Because your remark, Neil, on week 31, part one, actually really fucking hurt. You weren't the guy to tip the scale, but it still added weight. Oh, wow. GG. Dude, if you think I'm actually making fun of gingers, I'm ju I, my hair was red all throughout junior high and high school. Like, I, my, I come from a family of gingers. I was a ginger for most of my life. Like, if you... I'm not making fun of... Like, who gives a shit about your hair color, dude? That's the stupidest thing in the world. So, before Neil Gate starts, I, I want to chime in and address the root of this. Yeah, I, uh, I've heard that it's maybe a little rougher for redheads in Europe, for whatever reason, which I think is kind of silly. Um, first off, I don't think you should let any comment, whether it's from our good friend Neil over here or not, get to you about your... Your hair color. I, I, it's, it's no one, I have like a hard time deciding if I, if I really care. Um, when, you know, I, I, I don't, again, it could be like a cultural thing because like in, here in America, we just don't really care. I think first off, before you, you get, you know, think about doing anything romantic, you got to shake off the cobwebs, man. You're, you're really too self-conscious about, uh, an absolutely minute detail about your appearance. Um, so the the reason I say this is a big concern is if you're getting all shook up over your red hair and maybe something that Neil said in passing online, when you get in a relationship, man, you're just going to be sliced to shreds because you'll obsess over the most insignificant thing and then you're just going to just going to get GG and that's no fun. So the first thing I would do is just sort of look in be proud. Uh, it's your hair color, man. If you fucking want to man up, you can just. If you hate it that much, you can just dye it, right? Of all the problems to have in the world, this one is one that we can we can tackle with relative ease. Um, and then again, you got to deal with yourself, like uh, before you go into a relationship, especially if you're new to dating. Uh, there's a lot of push and pull, and it can be a really really stressful. So if you're getting wound up about something like this. I, we got to tackle the root issue first, and that's just sort of getting confidence. Um, you know, for you, you wrote really well. You seem like a pretty smart person. So just, just shake that shit off first off. I think you absolutely have to do that, and then just ask her out. Uh, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. Who gives a shit what your hair color is? Like that. That's racism, but even on an even stupider and smaller and dumber scale. It's like, your skin's black, I hate you. Your hair's red, I fucking hate Like that. What? That's the dumbest thing in the world. You cannot be upset about your hair color. That's like being upset that you're from Norway or wherever it is that you're from. Like, who gives a shit, dude? Move on. That, like, change your hair color, as Cody said. Uh, uh, shave your head. When people give you shit about being a ginger, go to the gym and then get yourself nice and buff and beat them in the face. Challenge them to a, a game of StarCraft and crush them there. You know, did, who, get you have to get over your hair color or you're going to be miserable for the rest of your life. But also, you said that this girl is the only one who didn't give a shit about your hair color, so why wouldn't you ask her out? Like, if you're self-conscious about your hair color and she doesn't care about your hair color, then isn't it a natural thing for the two of you to get together? Even if you can't get past this ridiculously small issue of your hair color, like, come on, bro. Who cares if it's red? I could show you, I won't, but I could show you horrible pictures from high school where I had, like, a bit of a fro, and it was red. It was bad, okay? It was bad. I did not have very good high school years. You'll, you'll be fine, man. You're going to be fine. Don't even sweat it. And when people make fun of gingers on the internet, you should check to make sure they're joking. And if they're not, then they're, they're morons anyway. To be honest, I actually never even heard the term ginger until I started watching Doctor Who. Um... Yeah, I, that's entirely a Europe thing and completely ri ridiculous. 
Anything else? Are we, we moving on? I think we're moving on. I think that's a wrap on that one. All right. Hello, Koivu. To introduce my problem, we have to go back four years, namely four years. in my freshman year. Dun, dun, dun. Fade away. In my freshman year, I was very shy and didn't have many friends. This resulted in me usually going to class before the end of break, something another girl in my class also seemed to do. We have friendly interactions throughout the year, although sometimes teasing happened because of this fact, but I digress. Approaching the end of the year, I was pretty sure I had a crush on her. She, however, started sitting in the girl's toilet before we went to class instead of sitting with me. Even further down the year, your, the teachers reorganized the class and we ended up sitting next to each other. She stabbed me with either her triangular ruler or scissors. I ended up dropping a level in education that year, which caused me to switch to another school, and I somehow ended up repeating that year. In my junior year, I went back to the school and I was in during freshman year. In this year, I had only one discussion with her in which things were generally friendly. During my senior year, my current year of education, I still have a year of education after this, but she does too. She has a higher level education. I still have a crush on her, but I also found out that she befriended someone that dislikes me she said someone I was usually worked with for projects during my sophomore year because we were both usually out without a partner. I barely talked to her this year, but there was one notable exception. Namely, I asked her if she could explain why she acted differently towards the end of the year. She responded with a hostile-sounding no. The three main actions I'd like to follow up uh, to follow up on I've debated are simply pretending like she doesn't exist anymore, trying to ignore her as much as possible. Telling her that I'll leave her alone from now, if that's what she wants. Telling her how I feel, which I'll probably chicken out on, considering I've chickened out quite a few times on the second option. If you need any additional explaining, I'll do my best in, to be in chat during Love Bites. Okay, this is so, a wild one, man. So guy goes to one school freshman year, has this thing with a girl where they're friends and they're talking, but then she starts avoiding him, and then she stabbed him with her triangular ruler or her scissors. Or scissors. Then he <laughs> drops a level in education, moves to a different school, comes back to the first school in his third year, but now he's got one more year because he dropped a level, right? Yes, Meets, yes. talks with a girl once, and you're still questioning whether or not you should tell her how you feel or just ignore her forever. Dude, never speak to this woman again. Remove her from all of your social media and write her off the face of the earth. Like This w woman is terrible to you. She's, she's not interested in you. This is one of those clearly defined, she avoids you before class, she stabbed you with some scissors or a ruler. What, what are you doing, man? Get the fuck out. There, there's no reason to ever even speak to her again. Ignore her forever. Cut her off of social media. Go find something that you're interested in and get super involved in whatever that is that you're interested in. Yeah, I don't... You know, when she starts to put the dodge on, that's a pretty clear indicator. Um, I think one of the things that people should keep in mind is, like, if you're, if you're still not in a relationship with someone, like, so if you're pre-dating and the question is, all right, guys, I have this insurmountable mountain of shit that I need to do to climb up into this, like, girl's radar and win her over, it's, you've lost already, man. You've lost already. Um... Because, like, the way this works, when people, when people feel like they need to, to – they're just going to put in the work beforehand and they'll show this girl that they're worth dating. The way this always happens is you start climbing the mountain and you always take, like, the lowest acceptable thing. Like, you know, so let's say you put in work for, you know, the rest of the school year or whatever and you finally convince this girl that, like, maybe this can work. It's never, like, you really – got there it's this admittedly crazy woman is like been whittled and worn down to the point where her standards are lower so you're already starting this relationship off on this horrible foot so best case scenario for you is the way the way you see it right now is this girl will go out with you this this bloodthirsty woman that you're interested in will go out with you like you just gotta you just gotta you just gotta pass on this one um you know you can't win them all no, yeah, I, agree with Neil. I don't think you want to win this one either. I think you want to move on from this one, and you just don't know it yet, dude. You're, I don't know. I I have been in a in positions where I'm caught up on a girl, and even though she's no good for me, I'm still like caught up on her, on the idea of her, and I can't get past it. it. Sounds like if that's what the position you're in, dude, 
you you have to cut all ties and move away not like physically move away but in a mental state like get your mind off of the topic of romantic relationships in general just move into new realms the what we always say here is the uh the self-improvement is fantastic if you you know uh, getting in physical exercise is a great way to get over heartbreak it you know there's endorphin rush there's more confidence there's higher testosterone things that are all going to make you feel much better so physical exercise is great i recommend you know body weight exercises all the time or whatever it is that you want to end up doing and also finding something that you're passionate on and getting involved in that so that way you can distance yourself from this girl by you know for example the go-to example of starcraft try and reach diamond on the ladder you know obsess yourself about starcraft and you're not even think about this girl anymore and then eventually when you're like gm on ladder and you're going to i don't know mlg anaheim 2016 2017 and you'll meet some person there and you'll be happy and blah 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 blah, blah and go do that but just that this person is gonna she's gonna stab you again don't go for it man don't go for exactly. it exactly exactly you lived the first time that's you you should call actually yeah you you've won you can walk away from this a winner because you made it out alive so i think it's a pretty clear cut, <laughs> cut case on what you should do <laughs> you made it out alive yeah um this is the one that we just read dear koibu and highly qualified guest my name is blank. I am, a mem I am a man of great confidence around my close friends and family. I have a lot of trouble talking to not only girls, but new people in general. I'm coming up on my 19th birthday, and I still have, a huge, I still have huge trouble to talk to people, and it's really stressing me out. Every time I, put, I am put on the spot to talk to someone, I lock up and feel my heart beating through my chest. I get the same feeling even just texting new people. Now I'm a pretty rational dude, and I feel that my antisocial tendencies spout from five years of homeschool before high school, which made my high school life a lonely one. I have zero friends that are girls, but I've also been in a relationship, which ended with her cheating on me with my best friend. My problem is not in a long-standing relationship, but more with breaking of the ice. So how do I build my confidence not only to be with people, but with women, and stop being such a wimp? Thanks. Eat steak, go to the gym. Yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you can do, you can do a bunch of stuff. I, I always found it fun to, to challenge myself socially as a, as a kid. Like when I, w I was a, no one liked me in elementary school for some reason, all right, which I think was a huge mistake on their behalf. But then I sort of noticed over junior high and high school, just being more social just sort of made me, you just got to challenge yourself socially. Just do like, you know, I don't know, man. Lift a couple of weights at, every day like Neil said and then um, challenge yourself socially. Put yourself in, in, in situations where you're uncomfortable. Um, just It's just like anything else. You just have to practice. Um, and then eventually, like, there is, a, you, there is a point where you just, confidence becomes second nature. Like, right now, um, and it's it's not even that hard. This isn't like a you know Neil feels the same way. I'm sure he talks to thousands in front of thousands of people every day. It just you you get to the point where you've done it enough where you're just not worried to talk about anyone. And it's a really cool feeling to to have. And it's a it's a feeling that is uh, it's just a sick accomplishment. And you'll feel accomplished when you can just walk in a room and feel like you can talk to anyone. So uh, whatever you feel self-conscious about try and address that right to minimize that and then just man, just get out there and start talking to people even you know it doesn't have to be romantic you know you're in a couple of classes talk to a few girls just to talk to them about stuff uh you don't have to start asking out every girl that you see just have normal real conversations with people until it becomes second nature you know um yeah i i used to have this issue it was this, I was really, really shy and didn't know how to talk to people and couldn't make new friends. And I was struggling with this for a long time until about two and a half years ago, three years ago, when I broke up with the, my girlfriend at the time, my current fiance, because we got back together later. And we split up and went separate ways. And she got, well, all of my friends in the city in San Francisco were her friends because we had both moved up here uh, just a few months beforehand. So I was left with only my coworkers as friends, and even then we didn't hang out outside of work ever. And I had 
was living by myself in some you know shitty ass apartment down in down in the Richmond on like 32nd and Balboa and life was pretty miserable and so I said fuck it I'm gonna learn how to make friends and then the next time I went to whatever Starcraft event I went to I showed up and I just pushed myself to talk to people you know I sat down and turned to the person next to me who was also alone was like hey what do you think about the match who do you think is gonna win and then we talked about Starcraft for a few minutes and it was awkward and then I went to another person and like I forced myself to try and talk to people and I was really fucking shy and awkward about it but after like two three events maybe four events of doing this and each event is like two to three days of pretty jam-packed social interaction I was totally fine and I've been able to talk to people ever since like at some point you have to put yourself in a sink or swim position and just go out and do it uh, it's in a situation where you know you won't see the people again so if you say something stupid or make a bad impression it doesn't matter so you know Find a place where you're not going to be talking to people who will be following you around forever and just try and talk to someone. Just, it doesn't matter. Just go up and start talking to them about anything and it'll be awkward and really embarrassing at first, but after you, you know, force yourself to do it over and over again, you'll be fine and it'll be great. Just to, con to contextualize this, and I think a bookend is always important when you use, you know, examples. So Neil went from this, I've, I've, I think I remember the first time I met Neil, and it, he was truly brute forcing his way <laughs> through the crowds. And I think at MLG Anaheim two years ago, uh, we were, you know, at some like private after party. And not only did I see see Neil, was it tango dance? Yes. Tango dance with someone in the middle of the after party, which was epic. Me and Neil became homies, and we were having. We went to some Mexican place at like five in the morning. You know. Oh my God! I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So this it's. It's a little bit of a climb, but uh, it is absolutely not impossible. And I think it's something that, you know, you should, this young homie should do. You should just, you just get out there. Do you know, it. Tango swag. Yeah, do it, man. Do it. All right, last question of our show. Hey, Neil and guest. One of my exes cheated on me a few years ago, and I ended up being friends with her twin brother. Though, I, how I, the, the, through him, I met my current group of friends. One of my best friends, who is in that group, has now started talking to her. He now says that he wants to get in a relationship with her. I have warned him that she isn't the type you want to do be with. He asked me to warn him if a girl I know is a nutter and after his last relationship when I was telling him throughout. She turned him down, but that made him more obsessed with her, which I realize is normal from my own experience, and I worry that he is going to end up hurt big time. How do I help him? I hate seeing my friends hurt, and it can make me instantly depressed. Or insanely depressed. Well, so your your friend, who you're in a social group with, is wanting to uh, is obsessed with your ex girlfriend who cheated on you. And your friend has also warned uh, asked you to warn him about crazy people. Well, this sounds like a very cut and dry example. If you say she cheated on me, she's a terrible person. Why would you ever want to be with her? And if he won't see logic through that then I don't think he's going to see any reason. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I think you nailed it. Uh, he's, he's your boy, right? So th that's already like a weird boundary that he's tiptoeing towards, you know, because that obviously you can't, I'm presuming that you don't reflect fondly on that experience of this girl cheating on you, right? So that brings up a handful of strange emotions. And then he's he's gone out of his way to, to ask you to speak up any time that, he, that you think he's making a bad decision. This is a girl that you have experience with, right? Like it's there. It did. It. She just sounds like a a not awesome person. So I think you tell your boy that this is a no go, and uh, that's it. Uh, and then he either listens or he doesn't. And if he's so wrapped up in all this that he doesn't, he's just bound to get himself hurt anyway because you can't see logic. That's just how it works. Yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. There's, if he's your friend, he's going to listen to you or he won't. And cause it's really hard to convince your friend to do something when they won't, don't want to, you know, you, you regardless of what it is, relationship or otherwise, if you're talking to your friend, you're like, Oh, Hey, let's go do this. And like, no, I kind of want to play Batman instead. 
And then you're like, well, what if we did this and this and this? And you keep listing things, and they're, they're like, no, no. And you can tell that they really just want to play Batman. They're not going to listen to you. And if this guy is not going to, you know, if he really wants to play Batman, as we're going to call this girl, like, what are you going to do? Take away his Xbox? You, you're, you're kind of screwed here. Just be there for him when it all falls apart. And then rub it in his face. Face rubbing is great. Like, you know, give it a couple days to to really play out and make sure that it's not getting back together. And then just face rub, man. Face rub. I hope it works. And I think that's it. I think that's it for today. GG. Well done. Yeah. Uh, do you have any anything you'd like to say, Cody? Any... Oh, thank, thank you for having me on the show, man. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, continue to support our friend Neil here, man. He deserves it. Cool guy. <laughs> Host what? the best barbecues you can you can ever go to. Let me tell you that. Oh, well, we should have a couple more before I leave the country. Where are you um, going? What I'm the going heck? to South Korea for two to five years. Oh wowzers! Yeah, I'm I'm getting the uh, in January, so we're gonna have to do some winter themed things. That's fine, man. Ugly sweater party is always a a oh. real hit. That's insane. Yeah, we're doing a pumpkin we'll carving party coming up in a couple weeks, actually, which we haven't sent out invites for, but. You'll be getting one. Okay. Count me in, man. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know. I'm, I'm excited to catch up. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it for Love Bites today. You can find Cody. Where can they find you on the uh, webs? I'm at Ghost Trolling on Twitter. That's pretty much my only public-facing social media. Uh, I might be changing that name here in the next couple of weeks because mm. Ghost Trolling was a blog I started six years ago, and it no longer has any relevance to my professional <laughs> or personal life whatsoever. Uh, but... Uh, very well. I guess that means you have to go follow him right now on Twitter before it changes and you don't know what it's called. So go check it out. See you guys later.